Hey, what's up guys? You're watching DIY Dozier, and on today's episode, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your 2014 or newer Harley-Davidson Touring Motorcycle Sound System. Stick around, I'll show you the tools that are required and how to get the job done. Today we have a 2019 Harley-Davidson Street Glide. This is a base model and we are going to be upgrading the speakers for a little bit better sound output. Uh, it has a factory radio in it currently and the speakers are less than satisfactory. So we're going to try to get a little bit more sound out of this radio. Over here we have some American Hard Bag uh, speaker grill uh, replacement pieces here. Uh, they're a little bit deeper therefore you can put a larger speaker inside the fairing and the speaker surround will not rub the factory grill. We also have a SCAR audio four channel amplifier. I'll back up here so you can see the box. SKM4004D. It is a 400 watt four channel class D full range amplifier. We're going to bridge this across the two speakers on the fairing so it's going to take two channels per speaker to get the power output that we need. This is supposedly a great uh, budget-friendly uh, amplifier. I'm going to give it a shot, and uh, I'll give a review on it whenever I'm done. The speakers that we're going to be installing are the Hertz Millet Pro uh, MPX 165.3. This is a two-way coaxial speaker. It's pretty nice. Uh, I'm excited to get a chance to finally try these out. These things are very good quality from what I hear. So, I'll get these in and we'll get a good review on these. First up, I will be using my T27 Torx bit to remove the screws across the fairing on the motorcycle. If you come into the fairing on the inside, you're going to have one bolt right there. You're going to have another one down here in the bottom. It's going to be the same thing on the left side. One there. And one down that bottom and come around to the front of the bike and we're going to have three across the windshield area so what you're going to see me do is i'm going to take out these top three pull out the windshield first that way i don't drop it on the ground and tear it up and then i'm going to take off the insides and we're going to pull this fairing back and unplug the headlight harness With the fairing completely removed off the motorcycle, I now have to make room for the amplifier, which is going to go right here. I'm going to have to remove this and this plug here, and they just pull out with these little uh, tabs that hold it in place. Pull both of those out of there. Now we can relocate the harness down. we got a nice little tray here with clearance for our amplifier. And here is our SCAR amp for reference here. It'll just go in that hole there. Okay, next I'm going to remove this tray right here using a T25 Torx bit. There's four, four screws right here. One, two, three, four. And then if you bend down and look up under there, there's one way up in there. And there's also one way up in there. There's also going to be two inside that side there. This is going to be the same on both sides. There is also one more Torx bit that's right in here underneath this bracket on the left side.
So the process for the right speaker pod removal uh, consists of the three Allen uh, 3 sixteenths Allen bolts. So you have that one there, you got the one down here, and then you have the one in that hole right there. Um, there's also the, the 3 sixteenths Allen head uh, bolts, one there, and there's two above it right there. You can use an Allen key or a 3 sixteenths socket to get that side out. Now that is the right side as you're facing the fairing from the front. Now your left side, here's a 3 sixteenths Allen right in that hole right there. And there's another one right there. And there's another one at the bottom here. And then of course we have our 3 sixteenths Allen bolts. And there's one up there. There's two more back in there. You can see them there. One, two. For this hard to reach screw down in there, I'm going to be using a, uh, a socket here with a quarter inch along with my, my T25 Torx bit there to get that out of there. Before you remove the left speaker pod, it's worth noting that there's a hole in the bottom. Uh, there's a cigarette lighter plug right there, 12 volt socket. There's a harness that runs into that right here. And this just plugs in into the 12 volt socket there. This one's actually really loose. But uh, yeah, just pull that out of that hole and um, you can take the pod off. Of course you'll have these little, you know, fasteners you'll have to pull out. To remove our speaker grills, we are going to use a T25 Torx bit also on these three screws. One there, one there, and one there. Looks like we have some hair or dust or something going on in here. Remove that. Yeah, that's nasty. All right, so remove those three. The grill will come out this direction, and then we'll slide our new grill in. Be sure to note the orientation of the speaker grill. Uh, you can see that these tabs, one is longer than the other. And they will sit as such with a long tab on the top. So you see that one's kind of close to the, to the hole there. That one's a little bit further away, as is that one. Make sure you get the orientation right. It does go only one way. Now that I got the speaker pod out, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the factory Harley Davidson speaker uh, by taking out these T25 Torx uh, screws here. And we are going to install our Hertz speaker. Here is your new Hertz speaker in comparison to the Harley Davidson speaker.
Okay, so we're going to be cutting off these uh, speaker leads from the factory uh, location. I'm going to be using my uh, my wire cutters and crimper tool here. I'm just going to cut those off, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to use 16 to 14 gauge female uh, connectors. We're going to add these to the ends of the wires and connect it onto the speaker here. Make a note, you do have positive and negative label term terminals on the speaker. On these wires I'm going to be using the black line as my negative and the, uh, the regular pink one as my positive. here let you guys know that there is a little uh, a little nipple here a uh, piece of plastic sticking out this will prevent your speaker from sitting flush you need to grind that off so we don't have any leaks from our pod and so that the speaker is not warped when you do your install get a dremel tool piece of sandpaper something zip that thing off of there and then continue with putting your speaker in Now with our new speaker grill reinstalled back into the fairing, we're going to go ahead and throw these uh, Hertz speaker pods back in. With our speaker pod securely back in place, we can now go ahead and put our bolts back in the bottom inside there. Get that knocked out. I will say it is worth noting, if you have trouble getting your socket in there for that bolt or for the other two that are up high inside there, like I said, those are 3 16 uh, socket or you can use a 3 16 Allen wrench. Uh, when I removed the bolts, I did use the socket. It was kind of difficult and actually using the Allen key was uh, much easier once I got the bolts uh, in by hand so use the allen key to tighten those down in order to power our amplifier that's going to be going inside the front fairing we are going to need a power and ground cable running from the battery so i have here laid out on the ground a length of wire uh, that i can use uh, the positive will be the red and the silver will be the ground i'll run that from the battery with terminals and with a uh a fuse to power our amplifier. So first thing up, I need to remove the seat to gain access to the battery, and then we will start our terminal connections. 
To remove this particular seat, there is only a Phillips head screw right down here. I'll remove that, and then the seat will, uh, the back will lift up, and the nose will actually slide backwards and out from the retaining clip in there. Now with our seat completely removed, to gain access to the battery, all we need to do is just remove a couple things. This, uh, this little piece right here just pops out with these little snap tabs on the side. So if you just use your thumb, pop it out, it comes up just like that, loose. Move that aside. This little piece right here just slides out. There's a tab on the bottom that it fits into this little groove right here. These two just pop up. We got a little. There we go. See this little fastener there. Same thing on this side here. Actually, they have a, a zip tie on this bike that I'm not used to seeing right here. I'm going to cut that off real quick. Bye bye. And then we'll pull this up. <clears throat> There's that. Just pops out of that hole. Now we got those out of the way. Back in here, slide that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and remove this side cover and, the <laughs> and also the bags to get the side covers off because I'm going to drape this on the side and I don't want it to scratch the paint. So let's do that real quick. All right, so again, I'm just gonna pull this back here to the side, let it hang out. Same thing with that. Pull that off to the side. Get this out of here. There we go. Now, and to get our battery uh, cover out of here, we're gonna be using a uh, half inch, half inch socket. Get these two off there, get that cover off. And now we're just going to come down in here. Oh, that'll work. You can just unplug it, it's a dummy plug anyway. Unplug that. We're going to slide our tray forward to clear that little silver tab down there. Forward and up. There you go. See how it comes off that tab? So there's that. Go put this away. So before I get too involved in removing the battery and disconnecting that, I want to make sure that I have found my uh, my switch 12 volt source that I'm going to be using to turn the amplifier on. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my computer safe test light and I'm going to cut these uh, zip tie off right there. Cut that one there. I'm going to cut this one off here. Strip back this insulation. I'm going to uh, probe a couple of these wires till I find a switch 12 volt wire that runs into the back of this radio. And I'm going to tie that into my remote turn on wire for my amplifier, so I'll give that a shot. Based off what I see here, these are the thicker wires in the back of the harness going to the radio. So I'm willing to bet that these are going to be uh, current carrying wires. I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, computer safe test light. I'm going to poke into these and turn the ignition on, see what we have. All right, so I found my 12 volt uh, switched power wire here. It's gonna be this red one right here. Uh, as you see, I poked a very, very tiny hole right there in it to test it. If the camera will focus. Anyway, um, I'm just going to throw a T-tap on that and run that to the amplifier turn on. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this so I don't forget it and then I'll continue with the amplifier wiring from the battery. I'm going to loosen the gas tank back here on the back now. This is a half inch bolt as well as the half inch bolt right there. 
And those are half inch also on the front of the tank. I gotta loosen those in the front and remove the ones in the rear so I can hinge up the gas tank. Pull these covers off here. I'm just gonna loosen that. I'm not gonna take it out on both sides. That way I can run my wires underneath the gas tank. Okay, so I've got these front bolts loosened on the, uh, the gas tank down there. And I have these rear bolts removed. I have wedged a piece of wood underneath the gas tank just to hold it up. And now, I have a clear path to run my wiring. I can run it up underneath there and bring it out right along this harness right here. There's a little groove inside there. I can run all my wires up through there. So get some power wire and uh, ground wire ran up for this uh, amplifier. Okay, so to save a little bit of time, uh, I just went ahead and, and ran this wire. Um, my battery died on my other camera, which was recording the process. So, anyway, uh, I went ahead and removed. I went ahead and removed this bolt in the front of the gas tank, so I can get a little bit more leverage on it and lift it up. It was restricting me a little bit. Um, I got the positive and the negative wire run through there, as you see. Here's our ground and our hot wire runs right through here underneath the gas tank and then we're coming across the uh, plastic channel right here it stays up underneath the gas tank now this will be visible it's going to sit in a channel up here and then it runs down to the uh, respective terminals on the battery here so we come out the front of the gas tank and I've wrapped both of these with electrical tape so here we are, and I'm going to zip tie it up to uh, to this pre-existing harness right here, uh, probably more behind it so it's not so visible. Anyway, about to get that knocked out now. Wires are all secure, tucked up behind the uh, pre-existing harness there, right in behind the forks, and we come out way down in there, way back there is where we're coming out at. And it runs up here, through here, and here's our wire coming up into here. I just got it hanging right there temporarily. I got to put this plate back in place that goes on top of this. And then uh, I can go ahead and mount my amplifier. And, you know, I've got my 12-volt switch wire here. I'll tie into that. Uh, and then we'll be wiring up the speakers to the amp. With my power wire and ground wire completely ran to the battery, now I'm going to go ahead and, and shorten these up. Uh, cut them off, add a terminal to the end so I can connect it to the battery. And I'm going to put a fuse in line with this. It is going to be a 40 amp fuse. We're using a 400 watt amplifier, therefore 10 amps of fusing per 100 watts. Uh, we should end up with a 40 amp fuse. So I'm going to put that on there and get that connected.
Okay, so we now have our terminals for the battery connected. Uh, made a fuse uh, fuse holder. It's heat shrink and the 40 amp fuse. That's just going to stay down in there, and we won't connect that till we're ready to connect the amplifier. So now we are going to move on back into the fairing and get this uh, get this plate put back in here. It sits on that, so I can go ahead and mock up the amplifier location. Okay, so I've got the plate removed from the motorcycle and I now have my amplifier mocked up with uh, put little marks inside the holes there. I'm going to pre-drill my holes and put some insulated uh, self-tappers through there a little bit bigger and it should secure this nicely. Uh, I am going to put some uh, felt between the amplifier and the rack uh, to help to diminish some vibrations. So let's get started with this. Okay, with my holes pre-drilled, I am now ready to mount my self-tappers through the amplifier. I've got the four screws right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off this surface uh, with some just some glass cleaner here. After I get it cleaned off, I'm going to take this, uh, this Velcro and I'm going to stick it on the amp underneath the bottom of it. And I'm also going to stick it on this, this plate here so that when I set it down, it reduces vibrations. Uh, prevent any kind of excessive wear on the internals of the amplifier or any kind of rattles or anything like that. So I have the Velcro now mounted on the plate and I also have it mounted on the amplifier. Before I stick the amplifier on here, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get these uh, self-tapping screws I'm using pre-drilled in there, make sure that the holes are good. I don't want to have it actually drilling this hole that I already made, that hole. I don't, that hole right there, I don't want it making that hole uh, larger and, and while doing that, snag one of these tabs on this amplifier and, and tear it up. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill this with this and then I'm going to back them out, put the amp in and then snug them all down. And here we are with the amplifier mounted on the plate. Got my self tappers through there, Velcro's underneath it to eliminate vibrations and noise. All right, now we have the amplifier installed. It has a lot of clearance. We are good. Looks good in there. Plenty of room to hook up all the wires. I have already adjusted all of my settings on the side of the amplifier. 
should be good to go to uh, hook this thing up, connect our speakers, and uh, give it a shot. So this is our factory radio uh, speaker, the right speaker output. This would normally plug in. Okay, so the speaker input wire is right here going to the speaker. And that's normally connected right here. That little tab is pushed in there. It's just hanging, just hanging down right now. So it's disconnected. So this comes from the radio. What we're going to do is we're going to cut off this plug. And I'm going to strip back this insulation to reveal the positive and negative wire from here. So let's do that real quick. All right, so I have the factory insulation uh, stripped off of these wires here, and I've got the, the ends already stripped also. Uh, the black stripe is going to be my ground wire, and the, the solid pink one is going to be just my, my positive wire. And again, this is a four-channel amplifier here, so uh, typically you would run four speakers with it, or you can run two speakers in bridged mode. Uh, because I'm running it as a four-channel input, I need to have four uh, signals going into this amplifier. So you have a plug here on the left which is channel 1 and channel 2 and then a plug here on the right which is channel 3 and channel 4 uh, according to the diagram which is uh, over here on the bench left to right on the plug you have channel 1 positive and then channel 1 negative and then you have a ground and then you have channel 2 negative and then channel 2 positive okay uh, same thing is going to go for 3 and 4 on the second plug also it's the same exact wiring um, thing is we have a ground wire here and it is what's used normally for what we call a common ground setup uh, with speakers that, that share a common ground. Uh, this does not use a common ground, uh, but in effort to not have to worry about any issues down the road, uh, hypothetically if, if, if we turn it on and we didn't get any sound out of it just in case it actually does have an impact on it. I'm going to go ahead and connect these grounds. So I'm going to take the grounds on both plugs, connect them together, I'm going to run them around over here and connect it to the ground on the amplifier when I connect that in just a moment. So what we're going to do is the positive speaker output from the factory Harley radio, positive is pink, and, and the negative is going to be our, our pink and black. Uh, what I'm going to do is, to be simple, um, we're going to connect our white and our gray together. Right here, we're going to connect our white and our gray together, which is both positives. And we're going to take that and connect it to our pink, our solid pink wire, which is our positive output. And then we're going to take our green, and we're going to take our red wire. And we're going to connect those to the pink with the black stripe. I'm going to go ahead and do that for you now, and I'll show you how to do it.
Okay, this one is now done. I have the wires protected with heat shrink, and that is because this is in a motorcycle. I need to keep our uh, moisture and corrosion down, if possible, on these connections because I'm not soldering them. So, anyway, we have that done there. I am now going to do the exact same thing with the other channel, which is the speaker on the other side. Um, here is our here's our input here from the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and get that cut off, get that stripped back, and wired up to uh, this set of wires here. Both plugs tied into the respective speakers uh, input from the radio. So there they are, both coming in. I have the grounds connected right here, also heat shrinked. And there's the ground wire that's going to come around over here to the ground on the on the amplifier. So uh, now we're going to come over here to the output for the speakers. And for bridging this amplifier, as it says on the plug right there, channel 1 and channel 2 is on the top. Channel 3 and 4 is on the bottom. Positive is the white. Negative is the black for channel 1. Channel 2 is positive gray. And brown is going to be the uh, negative. Now, because we are bridging these speakers, meaning we have one speaker on two channels okay we're bridging it we're connecting two channels to one speaker uh, we're gonna take this uh, this white positive and we're gonna take that brown negative so the white positive from channel one and the brown negative from channel two and we're gonna run those wires to our speaker on the, uh, the left side so we're gonna pull these out here those are gonna go positive is white brown is negative those are both going to go over here to this uh, speaker in the in the speaker pod that I just did. So I'm going to have to cut this off, strip this back a little bit, and connect the positive and negative on this speaker to the positive and the negative output here. For the right speaker, it's going to be the same thing. When I say right speaker, I mean facing the fairing here which actually it's the left speaker, but facing it, I'm calling it the right. We're going to be using the same, the same process for the bottom two wires on that plug. So as you see here, it says channel one and channel two. Well, the bottom is channel three and channel four. You just can't see it because the plug is in the way. So we're going to be using the positive, which is the green wire. And we're going to be using the that's positive on channel three and channel four, the negative, which is going to be the blue wire on the far right that you see there. So it's going to be positive green and negative blue. So those are going to come out of there. And we're going to run those down here to this, which is my speaker wires going into my speaker pot also. So I'm going to do that for you now.
with all the wires ran, the remote wire, which is uh, I've got taped off down here. There's our remote wire. I'm going to tie into that, and uh, that's going to be used with a T tap. And then I come over here and I'm going to connect these, and we will do our uh, connections on the battery next, and we'll be ready to give this uh, stereo system a shot. So everything is installed. We got power. Uh, I did have to come back and change something. Um, I made a mistake when I looked at this wire right here. Uh, this this wire is actually a constant 12 volt wire, so don't tie into that. Um, I was unable to figure that out because when I plugged in my battery or my computer safe uh, test light, I plugged it into the uh, 12 volt outlet right here, and when I used that. I turned the ignition on, it gave that power. I thought it had power constantly. And when I turned on the ignition, it sensed this wire. Long story short, this wire's got constant 12 volts on it. So don't use that wire if you decide you want to get in there. I ended up using a plug or a, a wire off this harness, this plug right here, um, for my switch 12 volt turn on wire. Uh, I was unable to find a switch 12 volt source in this harness right here for the radio. I'm not sure why, but I couldn't. And this harness, or this plug right here is not used at all. So I just uh, I probed the pins until I found a switch 12 volt source and then I just threw a T-tap on there. And there it is, I've tested it, it works. The radio comes on. Let me tell you, these speakers are loud. They sound great. Um, big shout out to Scar Audio, that is awesome. Their amplifier is definitely putting out some power. These speakers are rocking. Um, everything works as it should. About half volume on this uh, on this setup here is, like I said, very loud. So definitely uh, definitely does the job. Uh, old Chris is going to be very happy when he gets the recycle back. So anyway, about to uh, get on to mounting this antenna, tidying up all the wires, and uh, get this thing ready to give it back to him.
All right, I am back after my test drive. Uh, motorcycle sounds great. It, it really does. It's rocking. Those Hertz speakers paired up with that uh, with that Scar Audio amplifier. I mean, for the money, you can't beat it. For five hundred dollars, you, you've got to be crazy to want to go spend over a thousand or fifteen hundred or two grand on Boom Audio stuff with Harley Davidson. It, it's just it's a no-brainer. Guys, I know these things can be kind of difficult to follow along. If you have any questions, be sure to drop it in a comment down below. If you like what you saw, be sure to click that like button and hit subscribe. And until next time, do it yourself.